God bless you all. Feel free to let us know where you're watching from in the comments section. If you got a prayer request, put it in the comments now. As you guys know, if you've watched the last couple episodes, we're just going to have a conversation and we hope that the conversation challenges you, convicts you, maybe gives you, you know, just a different way of looking at things. Now, the people that I have at the table is not an accident, all right? I bring these people for a reason specifically because of the topics that we're going to have. And you guys know, look, I didn't pay anybody to be here. They're going to give their own opinions, right? So it's not like I paid them and y'all going to say this and say that. They're going to say whatever they say. I'm not responsible for what they say. If they say something crazy, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to be what it is. It's going to be, you know, we're going to have a thing, all right? But, all right, so you guys can obviously see I'm probably, like, definitely the oldest dude at this table. I think I'm the only one with, like, gray in my beard. And so Ecclesiastes 12 says, <clears throat> I'm, I mean, I'm the only one other than Jabari with a full beard. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hold on. I ain't mean to like. Oh, hold on. I, I ain't mean to like. I ain't mean to like that. All right, y'all was laughing when I said the grave, but okay. <laughs> all right, all right. So, all right. See, y'all get to see a different side of me. They they think I'm just mean on YouTube. You know what I'm saying? Don't believe everything you see on the internet, though. All right. So Ecclesiastes 12 says, "Remember now, thy Creator, in the days of thy youth." While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. So, guys, we know that the devil has different tactics, right? He's, he's going to attack everybody, whether you're a believer. And if you're not a believer, he's going to want to keep you deceived, keep you, you know, lost. And so the devil been doing what he's doing for a long time. And the reality is we don't want to give him no compliments, but he's good at what he does, obviously, because people are being deceived. And they're going to hell. And so a real simple question to start this off, what is the biggest thing that you see the devil using against young people today to destroy them, deceive them, distract them? And you don't got to give a deep, because you'll see like the way these questions go, we're going to dive deeper and deeper. But just in general, when you look at friends, family, you know, people in your school, at your job or whatever it is, we know that the devil, for instance, will attack married people one way. He'll attack single people one way. He'll attack older people one way. He'll attack younger people one way. So um, the enemy is always taking shots. And for every generation, he has a different kind of caliber bullet. So who wants to go first? Whoever wants to go first, and then we'll go down the table. Um, I feel like the main thing, well, one of the main things that the enemy is attacking is people's identity and like their identity with Christ. We are made in the image of God. And if the enemy can attack that, then he basically almost pretty much has you. And the only the Lord can get you out of that. Um, another thing is um, just um, sexuality as well. Um, another thing, like even just abuse in general, um, even if it comes from like family members, friends, um, mentally, like mental illness or oh, another thing as well. But yeah, that's one thing I would say. Well, some of the things. So to just go off of that a little bit more, the, the first one you said is identity, yeah. right? So I know somebody, you watching that right now, and you just have no identity whatsoever. So mm -hmm. what would be that quick advice you would give them to just, you know, they, man, why am I here? Like, you know, I'm just here for nothing. You know what I'm saying? What would you tell them? Um, One thing I would say is seek the truth, not your truth, but the truth. The Lord is the way, the truth, and the life. Mm. And the only way that you are going to find your identity is with Jesus Christ, the one that created you, the one that made you, the one that molded you in your mother's womb. He is the only one that truly knows you more than your mother knows you, more than what your father knows you, more than when even what you may think that you know yourself. The Lord made you. He knows you. So I would just say just just get with Jesus. Like he is the only one that truly knows you. Right there, some of y'all heard the word that y'all needed to hear for the whole night. Let's go. Um, it was funny that you just went into truth. That that's what actually what I was gonna say, and I think it <clears throat> it's tied into a lot of other things. Straight away, what came into my mind um, is that the enemy just attacks one truth. So I talked to like a lot of atheists and a lot of um, just people who don't know. They're just agnostic, or people like a lot of witches and a lot of people like that. And um, one thing that they attack people with, with youth with is that nothing matters, nothing is intentional, you don't matter. 
and that nothing that you do affects anybody else. And so right away when he asked that question and when you were talking, what came to my mind was the new version of the Lion King. If you pay attention to when Timon and Pumbaa are, um, you know, going through, the Huka, going through the Hakuna Matata phase, when they're in that paradise, when they talk with um, with Simba in the in the new live action one, uh, he says, "I was talking, I was taught about the great circle of life," and they were like, "No, it's not a circle. It's more like a straight line because if it's a circle, that means what I do affects everybody else, and that means I can't do what I want to do." And then you said something about truth while I was going over that in my head. And so a lot of people will say, like, my truth, your truth, all of these things. But to be honest, all of these um, different things like morality and truth, all of them have to have a standard. If you don't have a standard for something, like, to be honest, the research and stuff that I does, if you don't, if you don't have a, or that I do, if you don't have a standard for morality, which is just plain good and bad, you can't even measure if society is getting better or worse because it's based on what? If, if each one of us is like, what, 10, 11, 12 of us in here, if each one of us has a different standard for morality, then nobody can never tell if anything's getting better or worse. You have to have that one standard, that the, um, the one rubric, which is Jesus Christ. His morals never change. That's the only way that you'll know if something is getting better or worse, if you have something to measure yourself to. But if all of our standards are different, then nobody can really tell anyone anything. So when you're told that nothing that you do matters, um, you know, you don't matter. Um, what you do doesn't affect anybody else. Nothing is intentional. Then what that shows you, it, it uh, strips accountability. That's another thing. It's, it's, just, it's, it's huge. It really uh, pulls accountability away because if you know that I as a person matter and what I do in my life is attached to other people, then you're going to think twice about the decisions, decisions that you make. But society is pushing for us not to do that now. And so people are kind of just going willy nilly and then dying and going to hell. That's, that's really good. And for those of you that are watching and even at this table, just something to think about. You know, um, atheists, one thing that you said is, you know, Jesus is the standard. And <clears throat> one thing that you can always do when you're talking to an atheist or these people, these professors, these college people, is that you can talk to them about the moral compass, right? Everybody in the world knows smacking babies is wrong. And we don't need a Bible to, for that. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody, there's something in you that there's certain things we know like that is wrong. And the Bible talks about it in Romans. You read the first couple of chapters that um, God is going to judge people, some people according to the moral compass. And who put that there? God. There's something in everybody that they know right from wrong in some instances. So, you know, that's that's just a little something to add on. Let's go, sis, what you got? I feel like the devil tries to use, um, tries to keep us stuck in our past mm -hmm. and like going back to like exes or going back to what God brought us out of or just our past trauma, constantly thinking about that and using it as, a, as an excuse and stuff like that. And he also uses the fear of our future. Mm -hmm. um, Come on, talk about Trying it. not to be like, feeling like you're not good enough and what am I gonna do? Or I gotta do this, I gotta have this job, I gotta provide here, I gotta do this, but you know, God provides our needs and stuff like that, so that's how I feel. That, that, that was short and simple, but it's sweet. Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, Think on these things. So you you thinking about your old boo, you know what I'm saying? There's always that one person. And then, then, then you get in trouble. You know, you texting with the, you know, the hey big head or whatever it is y'all be texting, you know what I'm saying? And if you was in your Bible, you wouldn't settle for that. Because that Bible, that's your daily bread is gonna feed you. And so really when you reach out to people who did you wrong, did you dirty, exes didn't do right by you and things like that, you're settling for less than because you're really putting your faith in that act. They're gonna entertain you. You know what I'm saying? They're going to make you laugh. You don't feel lonely. But if you got in the presence of God, you got in the word. I know you're feeling con uh, convicted right now with what she just talking about because you just texted him. Mm. I ain't got to be deep in the spirit. You you just texted him and then you hopped on the live and the Lord, the Lord giving you a little tap on the hand. Don't text him again. Don't text her again. Come on, Reese, what you got? I think in this, uh, definitely in, in this time, the thing that uh, we're starting to see is like it, it's been true for all the time, but right now it's just a sheer overload of like possible sins, possible scenarios, possible just 
it's it's just a lot of things that people can get into so early. Like, like how these kids nowadays can have a tablet. And I seen a video where the mama tried to take the tablet for a kid. The kid just, just lost it, just went out. And it's like, from these, from the social media mediums and the systems that's around the, uh, around the world for the people that are young right now, like there's no filter and it's coming in from all sides. So like, oh, being an angry person might be your, uh, not, not your vice, but you know, they promoting drinking and alcohol or every single medium. Oh, that's not your vice? Well, you can't open Instagram without without seeing seeing them girls out there or, or the dudes without the shirts on, you know what I'm saying? Like, wherever you go, you can't even turn your head walking down the street without, <laughs> dang. And, and, and if you ain't got no conscience, you just gonna run into this, you just run into this stuff. So, like, I feel like for a lot of people, that's why they get this whole, like, nothing matters attitude because even if you have the church framework, you grew up in the church or what, what have you, it, for a lot of people, it seems like, for what use am I fighting if it's always there? Like, for some people, like, mm-hmm. that's a good it, never, it never leaves for them. Like, they'll, they'll, oh, I'm going to try to t- keep my eyes away. But then they go home and they, st- and they, and they, and they don't leave their mind. Or they always gotta fight some depression. Like it seemed like it's always some some battle there for them. So I just think it's like a progressive overload where, you know, having to fight on all fronts so early. Mm-hmm. At least back in the day, you know what I'm saying, it wasn't social media. So, you know, you had to go over there by them people to to see to see what the people had on them. You had to go over there by the witches and warlocks right. to go here to mess with the warlock. But now you can just scroll on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Oh, dang, what's this? And you immediately, you in it. People people can become blind witches just by watching the TikTok for too long. You know, they do a tarot card readings on the TikTok. Like that, stuff, that stuff is crazy. So, yeah, I just think it's just a progressive overload. And, and it's not even a one way to fix that. Like, we can say, oh, yeah, stay away from it. But also the internet bless a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of people that got their deliverance off of listening to somebody somebody preach. You know what I'm saying? Got through a hard season for hearing that song on that you uh, or that YouTube video. So it, it it's 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 definitely just it's it's, it's a difficult thing. You, we definitely gotta you know stay prayed up and you know stay on that way. And it's crazy what Reese talking about because everybody see it. You know what I'm saying? It's like even with these people who ain't saved. You know, you go to the um. Was it the LGBTQ parade over there? They got little kids in the crowd. You got these old dudes out there butt naked, like 60, 70 years old, you know what I'm saying? They throwing condoms in the crowd. And it's like, that. nobody see nothing wrong with that, right? But then let a preacher go out there. Like, they unbothered. They unbothered by the naked girls on uh, Instagram and TikTok. They unbothered by the old man out there swinging their stuff around in front of kids. But a preacher be out there, all of a sudden, we, we got to stop this. We gotta silence this. It ain't it ain't no freedom of speech. It ain't no freedom of expression. So that lets you know it's a spirit right there. You know what I'm saying? Them demons and people be getting mad. So a uh, bro brought me right in because what I was gonna say is new age. That's what I would say because a lot of us we're looking for peace. We're looking for happiness. We're really looking for Christ. But what the devil will give you is a counterfeit. And so you are born a prophet, but the devil is gonna call you a witch. And so. It's really, it's really new age and just how easily, like my brother said, easily access it is and glamorized. Oh, it's just jewelry. Oh, it's just a card. It's not that big of a deal. So my answer would be new age. I think at the end of the day, it starts in the home. You know, uh, Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. And I, the sad reality is that in America, we've kicked God out of our homes. We've kicked God out of our schools. We've kicked God out of the church. Um, unfortunately, I'm just church. keeping it real. I'm just keeping it real because the point I'm right. trying to make is that no matter where we take our children to, if they're not, you could be raised in church, but not raised in Christ. And so you could be raised in church, 
Um, you can, you're going to go to school and they're going to tell you you came from monkeys. They're going to tell you that, you know, there was a big boom. <laughs> These cells started to grow legs, came out of the water, and here we are. So that goes back to identity. Where do you come from? Um, you know, like on all fronts of society, these kids are being overdosed with information. We just talked about cell phones, social media, tablets. And so they're being fed literally everything. But are they being fed the word of God? Because Jesus, as you mentioned, he's the way, the truth, and the life. And if you're not being raised in Jesus, you're not being raised in the truth. And so we'll tie it back to the identity thing. When you don't know the truth about who you are, when you don't know the truth about who God says you are, you're going to look to literally any and everything to try to fill that void of identity. Okay, to be a somebody, I got to go drink. To be a somebody, I got to get high. I got to be with the cool kids and you'll try to find whatever niche, whatever thing it is to try to find your identity and it'll just be a big rat race and you'll never find out who you truly are until you find yourself in Christ. So overall, I would say the big thing is just kind of a combination of what Hannah and Kwaisian said. It's your identity and the truth that you're brought up with from the start. Amen. Keep it flowing. Okay, the way I think the devil distracts us is I have to go, like what Skylar was saying, of being stuck. And what I mean, like being stuck in your mindset, I feel like God created us. Our goal should be um, going back to what God created us to be because of trauma and everything else. We're not where we're supposed to be at. But a lot of people take blame and be like, well, I'm like this because of trauma. And they blame everything else but the real reason and take accountability. And choosing the harder route, which is choosing God, they like to be. Choose the easier route, and that's the end. So what she said right there, for those of you watching on the live, that's real good too because especially for you believers, the Bible says I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. But why is it that we don't apply that to the things that like she's talking about? You really stuck and you don't have to be stuck. You, 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 you bound to that X, you bound to that depression, you bound to that fear. And so we say, oh, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. When it's, you know, I'm going to put an album out, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to make some money. But then when it comes to those kind of things, the practical, and, and you look at the disciples in the Bible. We talked about this a little bit on Sunday. Peter walked on water. Jesus fed the 5,000. Water turned to wine, Jabari, all that. And they're like, man, this, this, this is fire. And then Jesus was like, hey, and then you need to forgive 70 times 7. They said, oh, oh, <laughs> increase our faith. Think about, think about that for a second, though. You know what I'm saying? You've seen all these miracles, signs, and wonders, right? But, but in the areas of your practical life, you stuck. You come to church, and you see the supernatural. You come to church, you sing, you prophesy, you cast out a devil. But you go home, you got a funky attitude. So Peter, Peter walked on water, and then what did he do? He was cussing, cussing people out, denying Jesus. So that would be a quick little commercial that I would give you if you're watching this. America told you to be impressed when people operate in the supernatural. That don't mean that they deep. That don't mean that they deep at all, all right? So that's just something to think about. Some of y'all stuck, and it's not even, and then we try to over-spiritualize it. As they were saying, we make all these excuses. You say, oh, it's a demon, it's a devil. No, it's, it's your decisions. It's your disobedience. And so God said, you can't pass go till you start being obedient. And you cannot manipulate God like King Saul. Well, I'm going to do what I think is the good thing. Or like Cain, I'm going to give God what I want to give God and still expect God to bless me. You stuck because there's an area in your life. It's like having a boot on your car. You ain't going nowhere. God don't care if the rest, you know, you, got, you look like you got everything else. Like Samson, he was flexing, tearing down gates. You know what I'm saying? And then what? Slept with Delilah, got jacked up. David killed Goliath, right? Then what? Messed up with Bathsheba. So don't think because you do one thing right, that don't mean that you're not stuck. That's another thing. You can deceive yourself that you're not stuck because you're so busy working or saying, I'm doing this for God, and you, you ain't really moving like that. You don't really got motion like that. So that's something to think about. You might want to just pause the live right now and say, man, I, I've been doing a lot of work, but am I really making moves? Man, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's, that's powerful. That's powerful. You know what? When you were talking about that, uh, it really reminded me of Jesus when he, when he talked to, uh, to, to Thomas. And he was like, mm -hmm. you know, wow, um, blessed are those who, 
who believe and still haven't seen. Come on. You know, and it's like, it, it's amazing because when I think about the youth, I was really thinking about the same thing kind of Jared was talking about. Like, a lot of these people, a lot of the youth, they haven't, uh, you know, they, their parents, you know, have been, you know, we, this is the, the land of, of uh, this is the time of information, right? And so we've, you know, as um, people, the parents, they've been given information, so much information that they, that they know most of the parents have figured out, wait a minute, my grandparents and my parents, my grandparents' parents have been deceived this whole time following mm. this church and following this way and following this. I know this information, so this is all fake. This is all, li I'm not going to teach my kids this, these wow. lies, wow. right? And then now you just completely lose the whole foundation, Come on. right? So they can't even see. So the kids are like, well, what is it? What is the thing? So now we got to find a whole new truth, and we're like, all right, we're going to teach you something different, wow. right? And... But, like, if the kids are not rooted in Jesus and have the stories and know exactly what it is, then how can they see that, wait, with Jesus, you can walk on water. Wait, with Jesus, these miracles did happen. Wait, there's, there is a Jesus around. There is this and that. And, and, and it's like, and I, think, um, and I think that's the biggest problem is, like, okay, um, well, yes, we have more information. Yes, we know more. But now, since we do know more, we know what's the truth, and we know how to separate, right? Like when when Jesus said his, um, when he he said his his sermon, right, with the with the five thousand, it was like blessed are those, right, who who are, who um, seek the way of the Lord. Blessed are those who do the meek, right, it's poor in spirit, right. The blessed he he gave us a roadmap to be able to find where he is, the where the kingdom of God is, and I think and I think that's important to to really to really understand and, and and for the youth to see like look like Jesus is the healer of all this like he's the answer and I think it's like important to you know um to not allow the youth to be to be mis misguided like look we we as humans we make mistakes but there's a Jesus who can answer it all Right. And, and, and I think that's kind of the, the biggest hurdle is what we're going through right now is that, all right, we got to create another generation of people that are not in that deception, but in that are now into the truth. And I, I think that's where the, the Reformation comes. I think that's just this is the time and it's prime. Jesus is ready for, for his return, to be honest. Yeah. So now he says some super, super deep. We ain't, we don't get super, super deep, but you know, the tree of knowledge and good and evil, you eat of this fruit, right? You're going to be like God. And so, you know, the book of Enoch, they, there's a debate whether it should be in the Bible or not, but they talk about how the fallen angels came down. Not only did they, you know, sleep with the women, and then this is where you get the giants and stuff like that from, but they also, uh, if you look at the story, they taught um, the people stuff that they shouldn't know. Right, information that, that God didn't give him. And what did Satan say? He said, look, you eat of this fruit, you're gonna have knowledge, you're gonna become like God. Then they start building the Tower of Babel, right? And, and they, 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 they got this knowledge, okay, we're gonna build it up to heaven and then God put a stop to it. Look at the times we're living in now. Right? I always joke about apple, right? But isn't it interesting, it's a piece of fruit that's bit off. And you got so much access to knowledge. Now they come with the little, little goggle things and it's constant. You can have five, six different things going on, right? Elon Musk coming in with the um, the Neuralink chip. I seen the guy, like, they got it tapped in his brain, and you could talk to Google right away. So, you know, how I look at it is, you know, people, bottom line is they're trying to play God. We want to be God. And then, you know, we, we talk about transhumanism, right? Because they want to figure out a way to live eternally, right? So they're trying to transfer the consciousnesses into the the sex dolls and the robots, and, and then the devil always come as an angel of light, right? It sounds like something good, right? The neural link is for the paraplegics, right? So if you can't move, we're gonna give you function. But what if, you know what I'm saying, these people, and we're gonna talk about in a minute, these crazy young people, soon they're gonna be the lawyers. Soon they're gonna be the judges. Soon they're gonna be the politicians. All these people that's getting brainwashed. And what if they decide, I don't like how Jabari think, and I think what you're saying is hate speech. And so as a form of treatment, we're going to give you this neural link. Huh? Come on, what you got, sis? We're going to go a little. We're going to go, we go a little crazy in a minute. But <laughs> come on, let's go. Um, there's so much I feel like I could say, but. Say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is just real quick. From what you were saying, uh, Jabari, like, 
we have an entire generation of people deconstructing online for everybody to see. And it's not doing anybody any good. <laughs> so you have people who grew up in the church that with their, oh man, my parents, they went to church every day, but still smoked cigarettes, still cursed, still did drugs, still beat, my, still beat us, still beat my kids, like all that stuff. And so you have a generation that saw people who were church people not live Christ-like, and then they're saying, I want nothing to do with that. So then they don't teach their kids, and their kids are like, well, I never learned from my parents. I don't want nothing to do with it. Then that's when you have where they did not train up their children in the way they should go. And truth be so told, good. those parents didn't train up their children the way that they should go because the way that they should have went because they didn't even lead by example. So you have three mess generations and the curses go to the third and fourth generation. Where are we now? This is where you can see revival. If you see the pattern of that, you will be blessed to the third and fourth generation, and then also you, the curses to the third and fourth generation. So that's just what I thought about. Um, the last thing, one thing that I think the devil was really just trying to destroy is life. Um, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he also says, the thief cometh to kill, steal, and destroy, but I come that you may have life mm -hmm. and life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. What do we see in abundance of depression, anxiety, mm -hmm. discouragement? That's because the devil is trying to take life, trying to take the unborn baby, trying to take joy, trying to steal peace, trying to steal everything. And I always had this question, why do young people die so young? I always just thought, why do... How do people die so young? One, it can be traced back to if you honor your mother and your father, your life will be long. So one is dishonor. Mm. This, another one is the wages of sin is death. We are born sinners. So if you go in, back to what Maurice is saying, if those sins are stacked up, stacked up, stacked up, stacked mm. up, stacked up, ever that. since you were born mm. and you never repented, the wages of sin is death. Then you get premature death because those sins are so stacked up. And that's why we need to chain up our children the way that should go. So that's why I just think that when we come as life, when we come as that beacon of hope to people, like they will know that. And I just want to tell any social media influence out there, if you're hurting, if you're going through whatever you're going through, do not deconstruct online because you have people that are watching you and their souls matter. And something that you say as you're pouring out all these feelings and all these emotions on the internet for thousands of people to see, you never know who you are leading. Just one more thing. <laughs> there's, a, there's this story of this man who went, he died um, and went to Judgment Day. And he said that there was this girl who had a Facebook. And God told her, you had thousands and thousands of followers. He said, I'm not judging you for what you put on Facebook. I'm judging you for the people you impacted by the things you posted. And so God, and this someone else said it too, where people feel like they're not accountable for what they do. You are accountable for what you're posting. You're accountable for what you're saying. You are accountable by God. The little seven-year-old girl might not ever text you, be like, you did something to my life. They may never say that to you. But you, but you got to think about that. So before you click post, really think about who you're impacting. And that's all I'm going to say. That's excellent. The Bible say that God's going to judge every idle word. People don't know that. So, look, follow up, follow up. And let me let me just say this now. If you're talking about you don't want to be a Christian because you got beat, we need to know what type of beat you got. Because I got beat growing up, and I'm just fine. I, you, know, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to hear all that. Some of y'all needed to be beat. You just, yeah, you you just you kind of tack that one on. That 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 don't necessarily count. You know what I'm saying? Like if you deserve to get, because they don't like to tell the whole story, Reese. They, uh, my mama beat. Why did she beat you though? We need to know why. We we need to know why. We need to know why. All right. Man, fact, I know I deserve my beatings. You know what I'm saying? And and and, and, that, and that's why these kids be so bad. They so they and, they and these men be so soft. Ain't nobody beat you, but but in, hey, check this out. This is the next one right here, and I'm I'm gonna. Read it quickly. This is going to be the big one, and then we got a shorter question to end it. All right, they say, this is what they say, right? And we know that every state is not built the same. 
So people in Texas down south, the Bible Belt is a little bit different, right? We know Chicago, New York, Cali, there's a difference, right? So keep that in mind. But they say young people are leaving the church, right? Now, I know to me, church isn't like it was when I was growing up. When I was growing up, church was packed. I ain't saying everybody was living, but church was a thing. I know in the black community, almost all black people know about Jesus. You know what I'm saying? In some way, some form or fashion, right? And so when I was growing up, like church was the move. Now, I know that Firehouse, our church is a little bit unique because I have the, the online stuff and you guys got a social media rapper, pastor, whatever. So we got a pretty young church. But when you look at churches that don't have that kind of like online presence and influence, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not gonna name any names because then people have a whole fit. But sometimes I tap into these lives of these churches that have been around 20, 30 years old and it's all 50 plus, 40 plus, you know what I'm saying? Like older saints. So I understand that we want to draw young people and I'm gonna give y'all a different, couple different things and y'all can talk about whatever you want. I understand that we want to draw young people, but we want to do that without compromising. Because to me, the gospel is good enough on its own, all right? The gospel isn't a gimmick, but Paul did say in 1 Corinthians 9 that, you know, I become all things to all men that I might win them to the, you know, Jews I become Jew to those with the law. I come as one with the law, you know what I'm saying? So we do want to understand, like, what young people are going through, you know, and how to reach them, but we don't want to compromise. Somebody, if you feel led, y'all can talk about this whole Christian club thing that they doing. Yeah, y'all know, y'all know I like to turn up, but... From some of the videos that I've seen, you know what I'm saying? Like the Bible said, don't let your good be evil. I don't know why you got to call it a Christian club in the first place. Some of the girls in there half naked, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you, so you twerking it for Jesus. You know, I don't know how that work. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm just being real. Like some of them, I'm not saying all of them, some be too much. So y'all get hit on that. Now, here's my question though, right? They say young people leaving the church. Is it because of the internet? Because now you could just stream services, right? So I'm lazy. You know, the pandemic came along. I don't got to go no more. I could just watch it online. So maybe technology. Is it because, you know, with the culture, they can't relate to the Bible. People say the Bible is outdated. You know, we got too educated. Are we too smart for the Bible? Brainwashed by, you know, schools, colleges. Is it the hypocrisy in the church that we talked about? Mama, daddy, pastor was a hypocrite. All these people getting exposed. You know, that's a big thing nowadays. Everybody's getting uh, exposed, you know what I'm saying? So what do you think is the reason why they say that, you know, young people like forget firehouse cause we turned up, but we're not the normal. You know what I'm saying? You don't see a lot of young people like that unless you go to them Bible belt states. So what do you think it is that that's making them not want to come to church and you know, all the different things about reaching them, whoever wants to go first and let's go down the t uh, table. I look, you said so many things. I don't know if you want to hit everyone, but whichever one you feel. I'll like. start off with the uh, Christian club thing. All yeah. things are lawful, but not all things are beneficial. Come on. So you might think it's a good idea, but it's not a God idea. And I know, like people like try to do things to like draw in the people, and like we can have fun as Christians. Do not say that we cannot because this is the best side that you can ever be on is living for God but there is a time and a place for things to happen and not to happen so I feel like with the Christian club thing like I just don't think it's needed per se but community is definitely one thing that is needed like gathering yes we gather together but not that way type of thing um about people leaving I'm just gonna say for me because I would say like growing up I grew up in church I wouldn't say that I left church per se because I knew I needed to be in church like but looking back now like and even today I realized that I had a very limited view of God and I thought I knew him but I really didn't mm -hmm. so I uh but now on the other side, and now that I'm having a relationship with him, the things that I knew as a child are not as though as they seem. So I didn't have the full picture. I didn't have the full story. And I just didn't want to live for him. I wanted to be in my sin. Like, it didn't feel good to kill my flesh. Like, I wanted to do what I wanted to do. So that's just one thing I would say. I mean, so I guess we, I didn't really say that, but some of y'all could probably hit on this. The reality is... You know, we know what we have at Firehouse, but every church don't have the presence of God. So if you grew up, you go into a church and it's dead. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
and the, and then on top of that, the people fake. It's probably dead because the people fake. And then I don't care. People say every Christian filled with the Holy Spirit. That's not true. All right? I, I know that's not popular when I say that. But when I read my Bible, that's not what the Bible tells me. Just because you confess with your mouth that you're a Christian, the, the Bible say even the demons believe and tremble. All right. Then the Bible said they're going to say, Lord, Lord, I did this. So I think another thing that y'all might want to hit on is, you know, a lot of churches are just dead. And they and then a lot of churches are silent and they compromise and they cowards and they punks. Your pastor is a punk. All right, that, that your, your pastor is a coward. Like, how is it that we see everything that's going on in the world? And we're gonna talk about it in a little bit. But I think young people know, like, yo, it's kind of crazy out here. So, what you what you thinking? I think as far as the Christian club thing, um, I don't have much to say about it because I haven't researched it or anything like that. I'll just say I think I was talking to one of my brothers, and I just think it's important for anybody who's doing this to understand this perspective. So. I make um, I make music and my stuff is like acoustic and <clears throat> everything that I most of the stuff I do I don't say God or I don't say Jesus in it but it's all centered around living a life as a Christian. I was talking to one of my brothers once and you know we just go over it what hits what doesn't whatever and I was asking him I was like would you or would you not listen to my stuff and why and um, I started doing music when I lived in Fargo North Dakota as opposed to being here in Chicago now. And just the way that people are raised and how they grow up is different. And so, for example, a lot of my songs have to do with a form of nostalgia or um, it has to do with, you know, just emotions and, and feelings. And for me, so I wrote a song uh, about my high school experience. When I think about high school, because I've been saved since I was young, um, when I think about high school, it's, it's just great. Those are some of the best years of my life. But when you and when you're in an area like Fargo, North Dakota, right, it's, uh, you know, it's it's not heavily populated. It's not a lot of crime, all of that stuff. People have a different quality of life, just period, just living. When you come somewhere like Chicago, I was talking to my boy. and He was like, the music is great. I could feel the Lord on it. But I'll just talk about even just Firehouse. He's like the people at Firehouse probably don't need something like this because not even what you're saying, but the the the. Um, kind of the vibe or the feel behind it takes you back and a lot of people in Chicago in inner cities if you go back two years you were not living for Christ it don't make you feel it like you don't want to go back there and so in the same way when you're talking about a Christian club and stuff like that you just have to understand the lights being dim the strobe lights going off Great point. the loud music Great just point. being there None of, none of those things in and of themselves are anti-Christ at all, but that has the potential to pull somebody back. That's why in the Bible, Paul says one thing. He says, I become all things to all men. And another thing that he says is that, um, you know, if there's a certain thing that will cause somebody to fall, he won't do it. Not that it's wrong, but he just won't do it. He talks about eating certain things, worshiping on certain days, all of this stuff, but just don't do it if it's going to cause somebody to fall. So it's important to understand that perspective. And then what was the, what was the other part of it? Uh, why young people leaving church. I, I do want to say he made an excellent point there. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody who's doing this is going to say, oh, that's not me. But the truth is, you know what I'm saying, for those of us who've been in the club, you go, you go to a little Christian club and it's like you getting a little, it's like you taking a little sip again. Like this, this, you know, it's not the same as getting drunk. You know what I'm saying? This, this reminds me, you know what I'm saying? And then, and then now, now that temptation is there, like, this was all right, but I need to go to where it's really jumping. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. keep, go ahead, bro. It, it just, it just pulls you back. So you just have to be cognizant of that and really led by the Lord and stuff like that. So that's all I'll say. That's what came to my mind. Cause let's, hold up, let's, let's, let's not act like, you know what I'm saying? First of all, you got all them single people in there. Let's let's not let's not act like these young boys ain't looking at these girls in them lights in that environment. Time out. I want I want to slide up on that. You know what I'm saying? Like how Jared used to get down. He was out there <laughs> sliding. Up. Hey, you know, Jared, Jared was Jared was Jared was sliding up on him. You know, put the hand around the waist and you know, you know what I'm saying? You know, you know that if we be, if we're gonna be real, let's be real because I seen some of the videos. Don't let's not act like that's not going on in that environment because it, you know the the devil is big on setting the mood. That's why that's why I always tell the brothers, I say, look, man, you tempted to watch porn, put some gospel on. You ain't gonna wanna, you ain't gonna wanna just put the music on in the atmosphere. You ain't gonna wanna look at the porn. You ain't gonna wanna sin. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta set the mood to sin. You know what I'm saying? So go ahead, my bad, man. 
so good. Great point. And just what I'll say about why why children are or why people are leaving the church. Um, just what came to my mind, I just I'm just praying and asking God. And what popped in my mind is that the days of because I said so are over. The days of uh, <laughs> not in my house, man. I, <laughs> hey, I get it. I get it. I got you now. You go ahead. You're right. But, You're right, though. You're right. The, the days of like, <laughs> like the days of yes, sir, and yes, ma'am, they're fading, that's and true. it's sad, but they are. Like, I have a child, and you know, with Caitlin, like, that's Miss Caitlin. That's not, hey, this is Caitlin. That's not how it is. You know what I mean? And so, what I noticed is I have a, a brother, he's uh, he just turned 21, actually. And this new generation, like, they want the truth and they know it, but they just don't care. Yeah. And so what I notice in the church is when it's like, okay, why am I doing this? Mm-hmm. Well, because I said so. Because that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not a strong, strong enough argument anymore. Yeah. It's just not. Yeah. And so when you have people, especially when you have uh, Muslims, when you have atheists that are willing to talk to you about what you want to talk about, mm-hmm. talk about, but if all you could say is, um, you know, well, you just ain't got the Holy Spirit, and that's the answer, like, to a degree, right, the Bible says that these things are revealed by the Spirit, but if that's your whole answer, then it's literally like, okay, basically what they're hearing is, if you don't, if I don't believe what you believe, then only the people that believe what you believe are going to be able to understand it. And so in, in church, especially a lot of old ones, when someone has a question like, why did God, uh, if God says don't murder, then why did he allow the Amalekites and the Canaanites? Why did he tell them to slaughter all of these people or whatever? And your answer is just, his ways are above mine. And that's it. <laughs> then it's like. That, that, that would be your answer if you're ignorant to right, the word of God. Right. That's why the Bible says study to show yourself. Exactly. Approved. He's making an excellent point, you know what I'm saying, for you Christians. That's why the Bible commands you to be ready in season, out of season, with a word for every man. There is an answer. The Bible is the answer for yeah. everything. When I say everything, everything. Keep going, bro. You're doing good. And I'll just, I'll just have, like, I talk to him, and I talk to my younger brother a lot, and I'll be like, bro, you know you're not supposed to be doing this X, Y, and Z. And he'll just be like, you right. And then he'll keep doing it. And that's the energy of this new generation. Like, they won't be like, they won't continue to make excuses for why they're, why, like, justifying why they're doing stuff. They'll just be like, you right. Yeah. You right. And then they'll keep doing what they want to do. But the thing is, on the flip side, is if you can't provide an answer for me that's going to lead me somewhere, not just, I just got to have faith because it's the right thing to do. Like, why is it the right thing to do? So you don't go to hell, homie. Right, right, <laughs> right. So, like, a lot of times, a lot of times I'll, I'll talk with people and, and they'll just be like, um, a lot of times it's, okay, you know, for atheists, it's like, prove to me that, that there's God. And then it's like, okay, it's easy to show that there's God. And then it's okay, they, but they'll take the next step now. Like, a lot of people before, they'll just be like, all right, that makes sense. I'm feeling something. Yeah. But they want to push past the feelings and go for the intellect because they can just get on their phone and start looking stuff up. So now it's okay. How do I know that it's your God? So then you got to you gotta go further. But us as Christians, I believe, have not done a good job as the body of Christ, especially in the past years, just showing like this is how you get there. And these are the real answers. And, and if I don't know, then I'll look for it until I find it for you. It's just like I'm, I'm praying for you. And that's it. So then people feel like that, that weak, um, they feel that weak, uh, disingenuine energy. And it's like, I don't want nothing to do with this. So before sis go, just in case you're watching this, you go research the other religions. I challenge you because if you love the truth, you're going to find it. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is going to lead you and guide you in all truth. Jesus is the only one who ever said, follow me. Muhammad never said, follow me. People just started following Confucius. Buddha, go look, go research it. Some man said, Jesus, the only one who pulled up and said, I'm the one. He's the only one in every religion. And then start looking at the double standards. Jesus died for all men, Gentile, Greek, male, female, old, young. You a Muslim, right? What they say, them brothers go to heaven. I ain't trying to disrespect you, you know what I'm saying? I'm just being real, but they get what, 70 versions? What the women, what the women get for going to heaven? You know what I'm saying? That that sound that sound that sound like some 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 a man made that kind of stuff. And if you really go do, look down and, and study the other religions, you're gonna find flaws in all of it. Go ahead, sis. Drop some knowledge on us. Um, I believe the younger generation is leaving the church is because they're so depressed and they feel so empty. And 
Like, we constantly have dopamine, like, on TikTok, wherever the case may be. And so nothing excites us no more. So when we do get to feel the presence of God or, like, stuff like that, it's not exciting because dopamine is like a chemical. It's a drug. And so that drug ain't hitting no more. So, um, yeah, it's just depression and emptiness and just wanting to be isolated. And I feel like I was at that point, too. Like, I just wanted to be isolated. I felt like I didn't need community and stuff like that, like, it didn't matter. And to use the excuse that, um, oh, I just have a relationship with God. Like, I don't need church. Like, mm-hmm. it's my relationship with God. And that's cool and all, but you still need community. Yeah. You need a pastor. You need accountability partners. You need people in your life that will, you know, help you on this journey because it ain't easy. And um, with the whole Christian club thing, I ain't going to lie. Like, I seen one on TikTok. I'm like, oh, they look cool. Like, I'll go <laughs> to that, you know? <laughs> and then um, it was like one in, well, I'm not going to say it, but. Um, I was going to go, and I'm looking at the times. It's like 9 to 11. It's like, so boys and girls, 9 to 11, that ain't, that ain't, wise. yeah, that ain't wise. So, yeah, and like y'all, like you said, like this generation, y- y'all looking at each other, like the boys and the girls, they looking at each other, you know, and how this Christian TikTok generation present themselves on social media is not really fully biblical. Like, it's still lukewarm. Like, you still trying to go talk to that girl because the way she look and the way she dressing and all that, so. So, you know, the Bible talks about wisdom. What she said is a good point. You know, you had a club. See, because really you're doing what the world do. The world say to the time the club is from this time to this time. So you took that and you emulated that. Now, I, hey, y'all know, I don't got no problem dancing, you know what I'm saying, turning up. We put the little rap music on, whatever. You know what I'm saying? But that that's a point right there. Once y'all leave at 11 o'clock, that's why we, when we do marriage counseling, we tell the couples, hey, y'all shouldn't be hanging out, you know, because at a certain time, you know what I'm saying, you're going to be, you know what I'm saying, you're going to be thinking some things, it's just you and me. Another thing that she said that's super, super important, she talked about feeling God, and it's like you feel the presence of God, but then it's like, eh. That's why it's a difference to be filled with the Holy Spirit, because in the Old Testament, go read, the Bible says the Holy Spirit came upon Gideon. The Holy Spirit came upon Samson, and the Holy Spirit came upon Elijah, but they weren't filled with it, right? So you can come and you can feel the presence of God, but to be filled with the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is an entirely different thing. And I, I tell you guys this all the time. It's one of the most unpopular things that I say on the internet, but every Christian is not filled with the Holy Spirit. If you are filled with the Holy Spirit, all right? You're gonna the the Holy Spirit, right, produces fruit. The fruits of the Spirit. It's not a fruit that you produce. So the same way that Adam was able to go and eat of the tree of life whenever he wanted to, the Holy Spirit produces the fruit and you can eat of it whenever you want. And so to go with what she's saying, that's where dying to the flesh and renewing the mind comes in. You're not gonna feel like worshiping all the time. You're not gonna feel like praising all the time. You're not gonna feel like being faithful. But what I can tell you is God is a reward of those that diligently seek him. And you can go seek other stuff, relationships, money, sex, clubs. I done did all of that stuff. And I promise you, if you dedicate your life to seeking Christ, no matter what, Jesus is the best thing that can happen to you. I I can tell you that look you dead in your eyes and tell you that for a fact. Jesus is better than, and it's not about the goosebumps because let me tell you something. Those feelings will come and go, right? But when you get a revelation of who Jesus really is, you just know. Ain't nothing else hitting like Jesus. I might have a, I'm on my worst day being a Christian. My, I'm talking about the most awful day I could think of while I was serving the Lord and all hell was breaking loose in my life. I wouldn't trade it for one day in the world where I was turned up in the club wilding out. It does not compare. So if you watching this right now and you kind of just one foot in the world, one foot in the church, and you're like, man, I'm not really feeling, it's not about feelings. We walk by faith, not by sight, not by what we feel. And faith cometh by hearing. Now I feel the Holy Spirit and hearing by the word of God. Some of you that are on this live right now, you need to open up your body. It's not about a feeling. Your flesh is never going to feel, right, like seeking God. 
That soul is what's crying out for the creator because every soul has been touched by the creator, the fingerprint of God. That's why nothing else will satisfy you. There's something deep inside of you that is trying to reach out and get back connected with your creator and your flesh feels the opposite. And so what I want to challenge you to do, man, I feel the, man, somebody's going to get deliverance watching this. Tap into the word of God. Tap into to the presence of God. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And be honest with yourself. You are thirsty. You are hungry. So you do got a feeling that's there, but you try to satisfy that feeling with everything else. So you might come to church and say, I'm, I'm feeling the presence, but I'm not moved by it. Hey, you got to be Filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what Peter preached on the day of Pentecost to repent and be baptized for the remissions of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That is what you need. You People hop from conference to conference looking for a feeling. Prophet from prophet looking for a feeling. What you need is not a feeling. You need to be transformed in your mind and be transformed in your heart. You know what, Jerry? Jared, you know what, Reese? That is the problem. That, that is why I am the way that I am. Because you have preachers that preach a form of godliness and people are not being transformed. You can still go to the club. You can still go to the world. You can still drink and get high. How can you be a man of God and preach that? That means that Jesus is not the best thing that ever happened to you. I don't need to fornicate and commit adultery. I don't need five or six girls in my life no more. I don't need to go to the party every time that I'm down and discouraged and feeling worried all I need is to tap in the presence of God and that is what you preachers need to be saying that is what you teachers need to be saying that is what you evangelists and prophets every prophet in the Bible pointed people back to God Jesus is the answer it's not about a feeling you gotta die to flesh the oldest trick of the devil is to get you to be in your feelings because to be carnally minded is death this is why the Bible talks about transforming your mind and having the mind of Christ. And guess what? It ain't going to happen. And I'm going to pass it to you. I'm sorry I felt the, the Holy Spirit on it. It ain't going to happen without the fivefold ministry. Because the fivefold ministry is there for the perfecting and the edification of the saints. You need to get around a real... Everybody that's preaching on YouTube is not a real man of God. I, I know that's not nice to say, but that's why we got dead, lukewarm, watered-down, compromised Christians. Because every church is not a church that God picked. Every church that's on the block is not a church that God ordained to be there. There's people that say, I want to be a preacher. I want to be a prophet. I want to be a social media influencer. But God didn't call them many are called few are chosen so what you need to pray tonight before you get off this live is God send me to where you want me to be send me where the real men and women of God are send me where your presence is send me where the fire is send me where the word is getting preached and they're not watering it down that's what you got to pray and the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you into all truth you don't need to listen to another YouTuber you don't need to go to another conference you need to fall on your face and seek God and say God lead me guide me shape me make me mold me build me protect me from every lie protect me from every witch protect me from every wolf protect me from every fake pastor and bring me to the truth and this is what I know the Bible says knock and the door shall be open you don't gotta go through a man you don't gotta go through your parents if you knock God is gonna bring you to green pastures God is gonna bring you into the truth and that's what you need to know you might not be feeling it but seek God for yourself and be genuine and God will take you to where you need to be let's flow hallelujah Woo, Jesus hallelujah hallelujah come on Reese let's flow hallelujah Man, you can feel the Holy Spirit all up in this mug but really so first I just want to hit it first so with the, about the Christian club thing I always say, even when I first, um, when I first, when it first became a thing and folks was talking about it, I looked at it, I was like, yeah, that, it can be done the right way. It can be. But my question would be, how long? Because truth of the matter is, 
unless you only go to your church and you only talk to the people that's around you, and let's say you do have a whole bunch of Holy Ghost Spirit filled Christians that you always around, and but truth of the matter is, not all Christians are like that. So when you talk about a Christian club, this is a wide encompassing event that many different types of people that say that they gonna go there is gonna go. And it's almost like, uh, like you know how, uh, what they do with, with, with diseases, where like, to try to like cut off a disease, they're like trying to contain it in the area. Like what's the what's the Quarantine. Where like, it can, it can very easily, it can very easily become that, like a place like that can very easily become that because just like Kwaisi uh, was, uh, was saying, where like, it could take somebody back to this area. Like, I think, if I'll just be honest, back when I was lukewarm, if I was to go to a Christian club, I would be very honest in saying, now, I could go there with the intent of, oh, yeah, man, I'm fellowship with Christians. But I'll be fellowshipping with Christians until I see a girl like. And then now I'm like, what, what's wrong? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, but, but, that's, but that's being real. Now I got my wife. You know what I'm saying? But, but you know. And he so, didn't have to go to a Christian club nah, to find his wife. Found, found the right here in the house of the Lord. But. <laughs> I'm delivered. I'm delivered. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but uh, for real though. So like, I just think, just like, just like, um, so said, like, everything is permissible, but not all things are speedy. And I just feel like it gets, it could become a slippery slope real quick because like, there's no way for you to manage that. Like, yeah, you could be like, okay, no turking and grinding. But you don't have nothing to do when these people leave that building. Because they could go there and be there, but whole time they, he got her number. And he might look like the ideal Christian man, but he in her sheets right after that. And to, to, to everybody else, oh, last time I seen them, we was, we, was, we was dancing to bro. We was, we was, we was singing his sis song. Hey, cause you you know Reese back in the day, uh, them them cats they go out you know freak with the girls or whatever. But then when they want to settle down, they, they ain't want to get saved, but they'll come to the church to get a church girl. Mm -hmm. That's what they used to so do. now you making it easy. You making it easy, easy for them. Oh yeah, all I gotta do is uh, wear the turtleneck, mm. the turtleneck, some, 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 some hard bottoms. Go you 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 gonna to be real? You gonna attract the wolves? Mm -hmm. You you bring them you bring them beautiful wow. Christian sisters in there. You gonna you gonna attract the wolves? Cause, cause a lot, cause, cause, because that's that's the dichotomy. Like we we get into a whole different thing where like the dichotomy, like dudes in the world, they dealing with the worldly girls, and you know all the troubles that come with that. And then you have a sister that might have been in church her whole life, and that's she she ain't been blemished, she ain't went through no no real hardship, been protected, and and that brother get he he gonna, he gonna, gonna come he gonna come in there. It's about 11.30, they getting ready to shut it down, and they, you know, they doing a little church song, I will bless the, and as soon as the music drop, oh, <laughs> exactly. full moon now. <laughs> he gonna tell, as soon as the club over, the, the wolf gonna come out. No. So, yeah, but, but, that's, but that's why I think, like, I feel like, and this brings to the, uh, the conversation of, like, the church shouldn't be looking like the world. I, I I always think of it like the one the way the Lord kind of explained it to me is like with music because I I make music and and whatnot that even though God has His music it wasn't fundamentally different di from what the world had so one for instance that everybody know you had blues the all the 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 holy version of blues offshoot was gospel as we know, as we know it. Now, the patterns of music that that was, was the same. It was a lot of the same patterns, a lot of the same vo vocal tricks that they used to do, but it was fundamentally different. You can listen to a blues song and listen to a gospel song and say, that's gospel, that blues. Mm. You can easily tell between the two, even though they played the same instruments, it was, but, but why don't we have that in the church for other things? It's too many times that people want to, oh, in, a, in the effort of, oh, we got to reach the youth. 
we got to try something new. Yep. So I'm just going to make a Christian version of what the world got other than be like, Lord, what you want? Yeah. How, how, how we, how we, how we going to, how we going to take this thing and let your Holy Spirit wash this thing and let it become a new thing. And then that bleeds into the conversation of, you know, how we reach, you know, like why, what, what's the issue with like a lot of young people, they don't want nothing to do with God. It's because truthfully, a lot of these people that's out and about right now, they live for the moment. Yep. They're not thinking about, they don't want to think about the past mm -hmm. and they not caring about the future because the future is the future. But that's what, that's what Christ has called us to. Like, we don't want to go back to the past, mm -hmm. but the Lord always wants us to remember that. Yeah. That's why he gave the Israelites all the feast yep. days so he, we can remember what he brought us from, mm -hmm. the promises that he gave to us. And then the future was where he's taking us in the perfection. So we are more past and future minded. We not worrying about right now. That's why he said, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear because those things go figure out themselves. That he's look forward, look forward to the future. That's what God always has told us. So like when you come to a young person now and be like, oh, yeah, you got to get, get saved because I don't want you to go to hell, man. Well, that's why they can so easily say, oh, well, I'll just go to hell then because they're not thinking about the future. Right. Yeah. They don't care. You can't even get these young folks to save no money. <laughs> but, they, but then they complain about they broke yeah. because they, they, not, they, don't keep, they don't keep future. They don't keep future in mind. Future is not even what they think, what, what they think about until it's smacking them in the face and then they're like, oh, day, what's, up? What's, what's, going, what's going on? And I think we have to do a better job as, as as Christians as not falling into Satan's trap of trying to water down like okay well I could just bring it down here because because the Bible says if I be lifted up I'll draw all men onto me so we don't we don't we don't drop we don't drop the standard to make it easier for them to uh, walk up the Lord will make the bridge for them to get for them to get up there we just have to be on we just have to be honest and understand where the church is and be like, listen, there's a lot of churches that won't be honest with themselves about how they are perceived. Like, people look at the church as what the Catholics have done in, in, in the past, what their grandparents did, what their father did. All this stuff that happened in the past, but I said, we got a lot of stuff that we find an uphill battle on. Why is you arguing with that boy? Why? Why is you trying? Why? Why is you trying to go back and forth with this with, with this girl? Now I'm not saying that that ain't, there ain't a place for that, but a lot of Christians they like to get argumentative. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I need to go tit and tat for you. Listen, they don't care. That's why the Bible said, don't rebuke a, non, a, a non-believer with the law, lest he hate you. They don't care. But what they do care about is, just like Hannah said, um, well, no, sis, sis, sis said, yeah, Skylar. Like, <laughs> just like, just like she said, but they depressed, though. They don't got nowhere to go. Even though they not looking at the future, they worried about it. They don't know what they what they finna do. If you ask them, I ask I ask people, man, what you think is gonna happen? Man, I'm not scared of death, but you know, I just don't really know what's what's after that. Come in from from that from that point, like we we have to we have to take the the gospel serious and let God be God instead of try to argue all these random points. Oh yeah, but the Jews back in then, this day they did that, and the archaeological did. Listen, there's a point for that. You shouldn't be on the street trying to talk talk to that. Right. The gospel gonna do right. the gospel gonna do enough for the work. But we need to have a stop with the okay. I'm gonna make a Christian version of what you got, so you can come here because all that's doing is making more lukewarm people. Yeah. And you know what? More lukewarm people, just like uh, Jesus said, you gonna make a <laughs> The person that you bring, that you so-called bring to Christ, you're going to make them tw twice as some hell than you were. Because the thing that you bring into them, not even authentic in the first place. So if they even do somehow convert and say they do, well, oh, okay, I, I want to believe in Christ. 
They still drinking, they still they still cussing, they still fornicating, they still going to this church and all the dude is taking taking his money and going buying some Gucci shoes and like it just perpetuates this notion. So guess what? Them people gonna grow up and become their grandparents. The same people that when they got in the car was smoking the cigarettes, cussing people out on the phone that when you grew up, you was like, bro, why you doing that? It's just, it's just, it, it, it's just the same, and it's a cycle. We gotta get out the cycle first. We gotta live holy. Stop trying to compromise to bring people in. Let the word be what the word is, and then let God do what it is. That's why He said, "One plants, one uh, waters, and He does an increase." He told us how to how to bring them in right there. That's the formula. No more worldly formula. That's the formula right there for you. So quickly on that, you know, what I'm saying one thing Reese said early on in the beginning. He's like. Uh, not to be like the world with the club. But one thing you got to learn, too, is is somebody being delusional by choice or are they being delusional by ignorance? Because the Bible says the truth will set you free. This is why the Bible says be ready with an answer to every man. Paul says he that winning souls is wise. We could talk we could talk politics. We could talk black Hebrew Israelites we could, because there's only one truth. So are they delusional by choice? And now if we have this conversation about truth, did the truth set you free by the time we get to the bottom of it? Or, you know, are they delusional by ignorance? Because what will happen, you say, well, we shouldn't be like the world. They'll say, well, you shouldn't wear a Chicago Bulls hat. You shouldn't wear jewelry. Like, and it never ends. So you got to learn that there's some people that they're going to argue because they want to keep doing what they want to do. And that's why the Bible says, don't cast your pearls before uh, swine. So this is what I know. God knows how to get people's attention. That's, that's at the end of the day, that's what it comes down to. So you got to let the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you like, Lord, who's ready for the seed to be planted? Someone else will water. And then God bring the increase because people, they'll, they'll argue. They, they don't want to hear it. Like they're really good at arguing nowadays. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the bottom line. So you got to ask yourself, is this person being delusional by choice? Or are they delusional because they're ignorant? And that's the difference because someone who's delusional by ignorance there's a chance that they might love the truth if you give it to them. If they're being delusional by choice, like Reese said, you're wasting your time. They're going to find another excuse and another excuse. Who's next? So speaking on uh, the young people leaving the church, a lot of um, us are... <laughs> Mercy. So a lot of young people, you know, are seeking the supernatural. They're seeking a higher power. But the reality is, it's sad, but most churches, you will not see the Bible in there. Like, you will not see it manifested. And so it's really the same old, same old. It's, it's like religious, just going through the motions in a lot of these churches. And like you said, it's dead. And so per personally for me, I didn't see the supernatural growing up. I First time I heard about it uh, was when I... Uh, heard about your church and so even seeing it first time seeing it was literally coming to firehouse growing up in church my whole life um but yeah so a lot of stuff we don't see the bible play out in real life and then um second point I would like to say about young people leaving the church is that we need to see people and leaders who are real who show like hey man I used to do this, I used to do that, I'm screwed up, but God still kept me. Like, because when I was lukewarm and in my sin, I was like, okay, I'm screwed because I, I thought everybody around me was perfect. I didn't know that all oh, so-so so did this or oh, so-so do, so did that. And so for me personally, I felt like, okay, I'm screwed now. But, um, you know, so some people, they may feel like I'm too messed up, I can't do this. They look around, uh, at the leaders and the people around them and feel like, okay, I can't reach that standard, so I'm just going to go because it's, it's impossible. But they need they need people to say, okay, hey, I struggled with a bench eating addiction, but God kept me and he kept me through that process and that he has you and that his grace is upon your life and that you can keep moving. And even if you fall, just get back up. It says that the righteous man falls seven times, but gets back up again. And so we just need leaders and people to show that dirt, to show that part that's hurt and to show that part that's that's not all the way perfect, and it's a way to do that. But we need realness. We can't just we can't just go up there and sing and do all this, but not show the real part of us that's struggling. Because we got people thinking that they can't do it. That it's that what they're going through is impossible because the people around them is perfect. But we all know that 
as Christians, anybody, as people wrapped in flesh, we, we can't do this life perfectly. Like, it's impossible. But the Holy Spirit will give us the power. But we will fall, but we get back up, period. And quick and quickly to what she said, we're going to keep it rolling. You know, some people be faking it, too. They're, they're fake humble. You know, I, I struggle with lying. Nah, let's let talk about how you used to smoke crack. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, <laughs> yeah, that's I, it's yeah, real. That's they, they, let you, they let you see to yeah. an extent yeah. because, because pride, right? They don't want to be really real. Yeah. And I have been, y'all know people say I'm bitter and all that stuff. No, I have been behind the scenes of Christianity and these people don't fool me with the YouTubers, the influencers. I see how they present themselves on camera. Not, and not all of them, but I'm just talking real because I ain't perfect. The Bible says if you say you without sin, right, you a liar. Now, we're not out here wilding out. But when you compare yourself to other people, it's easy to puff yourself up. When you compare yourself to this book and the righteousness of God, it's going to humble you every time. All right. There's always going to be something. Else, but that's the problem. People be trying to manipulate. This Instagram, TikTok society, they, they want to show you one side and then they're fake relatable. Mm. You know, yeah, I struggle with it. Nah, nah, nah. Have that same grace for other people that you do for all that stuff that you don't want people to know about. If we hook, man, let me tell you, if we hook everybody, your favorite preacher, we hook their mind up to a projector and you get to see everything they think about on a daily basis. Nobody coming back to church. Nobody. N O B O D Y. Nobody. Your favorite, your favorite, most holy roller preacher. You know why? Because at the end of the day, they still flesh. So don't put no man, don't put no woman on a pedestal. Uh, no, I'm playing. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Even, even though it's a struggle to share your testimony, a lot of times because the Bible says that. We overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Right. And so That's the good. devil will always attack you to not share your testimony. But that is the way that we overcome him. So I just want to challenge Christians, leaders, everybody to share your testimony, even though, you know, that shame will try to hold you down. No, speak anyway, because you're helping somebody when you share that. And when you when you share your testimony, you don't got to be throwing shade at people either. And your testimony is to give glory to God. I went down to the homeless shelter and I fed nine people and glory to God. And you know what I'm saying? Like we, some of y'all, y'all know about old school black church testimonies, but the test, the testimony, the, the testimony is to, is to point people to Jesus. Bottom line. Come on, Jared. Man, I got so much I want to say on this. So much. So Reese hit it. <laughs> it looked like he was about to start doing a little dance. <laughs> I got so much to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, praise the Lord. But Reese hit it on the money when he said that the church is trying too much to be like the world. Listen, the formula never changed, okay? When you go to the book, I'll always talk about how to grow. It's the book of Acts Church is our example, okay? When Peter went out in front of the crowd, he was a man that was filled with the Holy Ghost, and he just let God flow through him. He let God use him. He said, it is what it is. You guys crucified Jesus. You need to repent, and you need to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And so what we've tried to do is we've tried to make Jesus palatable. We've tried to change who God is. We've tried to change what the Word of God says. We've tried to water the message down. And so... Now, when people come to church, they don't get something that's authentic. And I want to share a scripture right here. Psalm 1611, you will show me the path of life. This is David. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Why do I bring that verse up? Is because what you find in the church should be something you can't find anywhere else. Woo! Well, I, I, I'm just going to be real. Why do we need a, do you want to be honest? Firehouse is a Christian club. This is the Christian club you need to be at. I'm serious. We dance. We turn up for Jesus. We have our kingdom ball, and there are pastors there, by the way, as well, controlled. It's a good environment, but what I'm saying is the presence of God is something that you can try to repl replicate, but you can never fully replicate it. Drugs can't replicate it. Alcohol can't replicate it. And so if I'm a young, unsafe person walking into the church, if I walk in the church and all I hear is a watered-down feel good, tickle me Elmo message that says, you know what, Jesus loves you just the way you are. You don't got to change, you know, three steps to a better marriage. I'm 18. What does that apply to me? Three steps to, you know, increase the finances of God over your life. I'm snoring. 
I don't care about that stuff. But if somebody comes to me with the real gospel of repentance and I feel the anointing behind that preacher, I'm convicted in that moment. And at that service, I feel the presence. I have a choice to make. I can either go home and keep smoking weed. I could either go home and go back to the alcohol. I could go home back to old girl. I could go back to chasing the things I was chasing in the world. Or I could get serious about this Jesus thing. And in your presence, David said, in your presence is the fullness of joy. Since I've become born again and really following Jesus, man, in that secret place, it's a feeling you can't replicate. When I'm in the presence of God, it's a feeling that never goes away. It's a feeling that it's rivers of living water. Jesus said, if you drink of this, you'll never thirst again. I'm the bread of life. If you eat of me, you'll never be hungry again. And so we have a bunch of hungry people, thirsty people. We have a dying generation, sick, depressed. Uh, Gen Z is dealing with suicide rates at an all-time high. And then they're going to come to a dead, lukewarm church where they're not hearing the word of God. They're not feeling the presence of God, and they're going to say, I want nothing to do with this. This Bible doesn't make sense to me. It's a 2,000-year-old book. The church can't give them any answers to the real questions they have, and so all it is is a social club for a bunch of people gathering, acting like hypocrites to them, and that's why they don't want to come to church is because they don't have something authentic. So that's my take on why young people aren't in the church is because they're not encountering the real presence. You want to see young people come to your church? Leaders, if you're watching this, how about we stop trying to put on the lights, the cameras, and the shows, and let's start hopping in the prayer meeting. Let's start weeping before God and crying out for the lost generation. Let's get on our knees and cry out for the depressed of our generation. Cry out for those who are committing suicide. Cry out for those who are lost in drugs and alcohol. And let's actually get out in the streets and reach these people the way the Bible tells us to, by fulfilling the Great Commission. That's how we see revival in America. Isaiah, it took one encounter from God. He was a man of wicked lips. He says, woe is me. I'm unclean. He got one touch from God and he said what? Send me Lord. I'll go. That's what the church in America needs. It needs a group of young people, people at this table that says, Jesus, I see a generation that's hungry. I see a generation that's thirsty. Send me Lord. I'm going to go be the difference maker. If nobody else wants to spark revival in my city, I'm going to be the one that sparks revival in my city. That's how you see young people come to the church. Amen. Amen. Jared, Jared says something so deep that I, I just want to hit this real quick, real fast. Because listen, it's 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 some it's real it's real serious though, right? The Bible says the anointing that destroys the yoke, right? And so sometimes I say stuff on the internet, Reese, that I know people be like, man, that's that's mean, that's arrogant, right? But this is what I know for a fact. You know what I'm saying? When Peter stepped out, the oil was on him. And you can tell, if you've been in church long enough and you've been to different types of things, you see the difference. And there's people that they're you. This is the problem that we have. This is the biggest problem that we have in Christianity is that people who are not filled with the Spirit, who don't got the oil, have learned Christian lingo. And so because you don't have the oil, now I'm not against smoke machines or anything like that, but that's why we have to have all this other stuff. Ooh. It's true because they don't got the oil. And so there's so many people that I see online. And if you, I always use this example. If y'all come spend time at my house a lot, right? And I say, hey, sis, go to the fridge. You're going to know exactly where to go. People who really spend time in the presence of God, you can tell when other people don't go there. When you do worship, I can tell when the worship leader get up there, you ain't been in the presence privately because you can't lead people publicly where you don't go privately. I can tell when a preacher gets up there and he's just, that's why some of these preachers are what I like to call Instagram, Facebook quote preachers. They found little things that went viral and you hear it all throughout their message. You can tell if you're a preacher, you can tell when a man of God is preaching something and he was in a secret place because it feels different. And see, some people, they don't know. The carnal man cannot receive the things of the spirit. Religious people are not going to understand what I'm talking about. If you're not filled with the spirit, this what I'm saying right now is going to make you mad and you're not going to understand. You're going to say it's arrogant. But they thought David was arrogant when he went down there talking to Goliath. And so, Jared, what you're saying, that is the biggest. The Ephesians says to have unity in the spirit. 
That's why I keep preaching against denominational stuff because people got the right label, but the inside is dirty. And Jesus told the Pharisees, you clean the outside of the cup, but the inside is dirty. The outside of the cup says Pentecostal, but the inside says fornication. The outside of the cup says Baptist. And everybody's like, man, that's a nice cup. You got the right label, but the inside is filthy. And that's just a fact. And so what I would tell you guys, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier, is to pray, God, send me to a spirit-filled church. And I know that's, that, that make people so mad, but every church ain't spirit-filled. And the sad thing is a lot of people don't know the difference. You don't know the difference. You're going to the popular church. You're going to the cool church. You're going to the church where they give you the motivational message, and it feels good because you don't know better. It's like somebody that all you dated was dudes that abused you and did you wrong. And then a guy comes along and here's the scary part. You can be so loyal to this, or so used to dysfunction, you become loyal to it. And God is trying to show you something better, but you can't receive the better because you're used to that environment. Let's keep flowing, Who, whoever was going. Okay, for the Christian club, I'm not going to lie, like me and my sister, we literally planned a week ago <laughs> to go to one. I'm, I'm not going to lie, but like, uh, that's why I was trying to figure out every reason why it was good. But to hear all of y'all saying, like, y'all literally convicted me because what you were saying, like, with the nostalgia, it's like, I could have went back to a familiar spirit and went back to the club and not knowing. That's why I feel like influencers need to understand how much an impact they have on us because, like, we would have been there last week. But, um,. Right. <laughs> but even though we were trying to go, you know, to build community, make Christian friends, like we weren't going for the wrong reasons, right. but I didn't know that I could have went back to something like that. And then for me personally, I feel like young people are not going to church. Um, one, how everybody's saying spirit led, like I've been to many churches. We visited many churches. You have two worship songs, 30 minutes and we're out. So um, it's really hard to find a spirit-led church that goes with the worship, that goes, like, Pastor Marcus, he, you know, we're worshiping all of this time for two, three hours, <laughs> and I've never seen nothing like that. So and then I feel like the church is also, a lot of churches and Christians are judgmental. You go into a church, I could be working on modesty, and instead of women of God looking me up and down, instead of helping me. So I feel like that's another reason. And also community. Um, I feel like this is the first church we've actually felt welcomed and people are coming up to you. Even I've never met a pastor at any other church. Like you don't get that one-on-one um, -on -one a lot. So I feel like that's a lot of things young people need. And also if young people are in church, um, it's because they're comfortable. This is the first church I felt uncomfortable and felt where I needed to grow actually. Like a lot of pastors are just motivational and they make you feel good, but they don't see where you need to grow in. Mm -hmm. She, she said a lot of things. And so what we're going to do, we're going to end the conversation going that way. And then we'll probably give like a last word. So I just, I want to say this real quick too. You know what I'm saying? Like there is a group of people out there, right? That they want to have their cake and eat it too. They believe God enough, Sydney, that I'm going to go to church and I'm going to do the bare minimum, right? But that's why if church go too long, they get irritated because you don't really love God like that. And that's why they don't like certain preachers and because you don't really love God like you say you do. And then when somebody come around that really love them like that, it gets exposed in you. And that's why you don't like them. You looking at them funny because you really don't love. It's like, come on, man, we, we in the presence. How can you be in the presence? Why you want to go to heaven for it? Why you want to go to heaven for it then? You know what I'm saying? If the presence irritates you, you know what I'm saying? Like... <laughs> <laughs> but it's true and they and people don't want to hear that so they 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 want to go to a church where let me tell let me tell y'all this you can't manipulate god because and they'll put it on the pastor they knowingly go to a watered down lukewarm church and then they tell themselves you know that pastor he's doing too much he's crazy this pastor's telling me i'm safe and so there's people that they don't love God, but they believe in God enough where it's like, I want to do just enough to feel like, all right, I'm going I'm to slide on into heaven. Because they're not dumb. They know that there's people, they look around and they're like, man, the Bible is unfolding in front of my eyes, so I need to be in church. But they serve me with their lips. 
but their hearts are far from me. Don't that, don't let that be you. Let's keep it flowing. You, you said you wanted to cut off some, somewhere. You said hey, something. no, y'all y'all go in, oh, and then okay. I'm going to give everybody one more word. It'll be a quick one, and we'll call it a wrap. We've been in here for a little bit. We can keep going, you know what I'm saying? But nah, we. we I mean, <laughs> yeah, I know y'all probably hungry and stuff. We got church tomorrow and stuff, so come on. Man, also like, look, I want to say something, man. I love turning up. All right, like, like. <laughs> <laughs> we know, we know. So, so I mean, just the idea of a of like just a place where you just turn up all the time, like a club, you just turning up all the time. You know, it's wonderful, right? But but then I'm like, wait a minute, we're Christians, right? So it's like, wait a minute, we're turning up for something different. Like I think I think like we think about these Christian clubs and whatever. You know, I I, I saw a couple of glimpses of it, and they're all like, it seems like they're kind of they're glorifying themselves, right? It's like they're like, oh look at me, I'm dancing, I'm doing this and this and that, right? I look good, this and that, right? Like. Like, like if we're if we're really Christians for real, for real, like we're gonna be turning up for God. Like we're gonna be worshiping God. We're gonna be exalting God. Like God is gonna be in this place. You know what I'm saying? And, and people are gonna get saved. People are gonna change. Like this is gonna be an environment that's gonna rearrange you. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, and so. So, like, that's the type of place. I mean, people love music. Like, that's what music does. Like, it goes into your brain, and it, and it, and, and, and it, and it makes you, and it, it changes you. You know what I'm saying? It makes you feel something, right? And, and um, if, we're, if we're making that God, boom, it's, 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 it's changing. It's, it's changing. And that's why people go to these clubs, because they want to feel. They want to get that moment of feeling. But if, what's the best feeling? That everlasting feeling, right? That, that, that Christ <laughs> feeling. And so, so like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So, I mean, cause look, cause y'all, cause y'all laughing, cause y'all laughing, cause y'all see me turning up all the time, right? That's why they don't. That's why they don't turn up like that. They, they, that's why David was dancing. His wife was hating because you don't know God like I know God. Right. If you knew God how I knew God, you'd turn up too. Exactly. You know. <laughs> hey, jo jo Josiah is tripping me out right now because the way he. He 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 had the camera on you while you're talking, and the way he's smiling and looking at the final, he's like, man, this is some Steven Spielberg. He's like, he like, he like, this this is this is some really good content. <laughs> the way he look, keep going, man. You amen, flowing. amen. But you know, like, um, and the, the thing is, what I what I Ooh, that boy turned red. <laughs> what I. <laughs> Keep going, Jabari. Guys are good. <laughs> Look, so so here's the thing. It's like with the whole churches thing, you know. Um, it's it's like I've I've been around so many different type of people. I've been around influencers, celebrities. I've been in in, in at galas and all type of places. I've been all these. I've been lukewarm churches. I've been in real dead churches. You said galas. <laughs> Gay loves like, like gay loves like you know. Like, I thought he, I, I, I want I wanted it to be I wanted to be no oh, I wanted it to be clear for the YouTube because people be in the comments. I thought you said gay gay clubs. <laughs> no gallows like, Gal yeah. gallows gallows like, gallows. Okay. like you know like those places where you get all dressed up in suit and ties and stuff like that. But anyway, he was he was he was going he, the galas, the fancy parties. Exactly. I ain't here because I know how y'all be on YouTube. They be like, he said this, he said this. So I just wanted to clarify. Hey, I appreciate sorry. you. I'm sorry, Jabari. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> hey, how many of y'all been to a gala before though? I've been to a gala. Okay, now nah, imagine. Uh, so, so y'all uh, right. fancy in here. And <laughs> hey, we got well, we gotta have one of those. All right. Well, hold on. What do they do at the galas? Well, you you get dressed up in yeah. suit and tie. You sit around. You have like these speeches, awards yeah. be given, and and then you have like you know, uh, it, it's yeah. it's like the high entry line. You have to get invited only. Oh, that sound like yeah. Freemasons. <laughs> <laughs> that sound like the Freemasons. <laughs> hold on. We don't. We do not do that around here because I know some of y'all gonna like to run with that. That's demonic. We don't. We don't go with that. We we don't do that. We don't. Nah, we just we just we just we. Just, yeah, because colleges, colleges, uh, you know my school like schools and um, yeah, uh, schools and sports, right? Nah, we mess with you. But anyway. <laughs>
He's a very he's a very sophisticated uh, man, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, all you sing, all you single, all you single ladies watching on YouTube. He's a he's a holy, sophisticated, you know, classy man. I don't need all that. Man. I'm all right, let's let's get back in the spirit, y'all. Get back in the spirit. Come on, Jabari, bring us bring us back. Amen, in. amen. I'm gonna bring y'all back. But you know what? So like these churches and what I've seen, you know, what I've seen in in, in these different places. Is that the the parts where where I was influencing? Like I, I've I've always been a person of, of I've influenced people whether I know it knew it or not. And and in the moment I realized that wait a minute, like our life isn't just about about just us living. It's about how you live, and it's about like everything around you is it change it's affected by it. And, and so I'm like, that's this is interesting, right? Like we all just I just changed the room, right? We were all laughing, having a good time, right? Like. It's the thing, it's like, it's what I realize is that if you don't, if you're not Christ-centered, then that influence then is, is a negative influence, whether you like it or not, you know what I'm saying? And, and like, so, so when I, when I've, what I've learned in going to these dead churches, you know, getting back to your questions, going to churches that, that um, don't, don't really have, they're not, don't have the spirit and, and you can't, and, and you're like, well, you know, these, and these young people going into it and they're just, it just going right back out because it's like, it's like I'll, I'll go into it and I, I'm just turning up and I'm having and I'm I'm praising the Lord, and and everybody around me is just dead. Everyone else is just like, well, what is this guy doing? Like this is this is this isn't this doesn't make sense, right? Like, like, and if you don't if if you don't allow the Holy Spirit to flow, if if you don't allow the Spirit to change you. If, if, if you don't start to have that, then, then you'll never be able to, to be able to, to experience God for who he fully is, you know? And, and so, and I think that's important to let the youth know, like, look, there is opportunities out there. There is places out there like, you know, like Firehouse, right? Firehouse is a great example. Watch, watch Firehouse. Check it out. See how, see how, we, see how we do and, and see, wow, is there a place that, that replicates this? Because the spirit is the spirit, right? And, and I think it's so important to just, you know, always be in that love, always be in that, in that, that pocket and um, enjoy life. And I think, I think more concepts like Christian clubs can be realities if we focus on worshiping God and not, not, uh, not the other way around. Like if we just say, all right, guys, we're going to focus on God and we're just going to just praise God. We're going to praise God, praise God for hours. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just praise God and then, and see how the Holy Spirit works. And I think, and I think that that's, you have to have the right people in charge because it's, it's the same thing with Christian rap. It's so easy to make it about you and your bars. And that's why there's, you know, Christian rap can get pretty good and you can feel the spirit of God if you do it right with the right heart. But most of the time, it's you know, there's so much ego there. You see it a lot of Christian shows, like that one guy goes up and then the other guy follows, and it's like a competition. And it's like whose bars was better, whose song was better, and it's not about just lifting up God. So you know, it's it's just it got to be wisdom. What you got, sis? Come on, land this plane. <laughs> okay, so Spirit Airlines. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, okay, I ain't trying to go into more giggle fits. So, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. Okay, um, so I'm going to expose myself real quick, but I promise you it's going to make sense. So I had this friend, <laughs> and the friend is not me. I'm not talking hypothetically. <laughs> okay, so I had this friend. <laughs> no, for real. If I'm like, man, I need prayer. I would be like, man, I don't want to go to her, though, because I'm going to be on the phone for, like, an hour and a half. So, oh, man. So, like, but I'm like, man, bro. So, like, if you went to her for prayer, like, you would not be getting off the phone for a long time, which is not a bad thing, really, which is, like, actually a very good thing. But my point is this. Um, I wrote this down. The church looks like the world, but there isn't a standard of righteousness. Is having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And so a lot of people want like a McDonald's, like a drive through like get get fixed quick type of a thing. And that's how I was with my friend. Like, okay, I want prayer, but why don't I want to actually sit there and 
have her war for me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why am I so impatient for the thing that I literally just said that I needed? Or I must not need it that bad. Like, I mean, like, I must not need it that bad. So it's just like that. And then um, for the Christian club thing, everybody pretty much said everything. But um, this is something that God told me, and I'm going to bring it back to the word. Because the Lord talks to me a lot about, like, you know, what's just going on, like, a, like, you know, like the uh, mountains of influence or whatever. Like, God talks to me about those things. And I have, a, like, YouTube and stuff, too. And one thing he told me was that the so like, he said, do you not think, I literally create the universe. Do you not think that I am creative enough or genius enough to give you something different than what everybody else is doing? Yep, that's the, good. <laughs> The Bible, so the Bible literally says, I knowledge dwell with prudence, prudence and maketh known witty inventions. What do you think that means? God can give you the most out of the box creative idea that this world has never seen. Why? Because I am doing a new thing. Behold, the past is gone and I and behold, all things have become new. Like you don't have to do a Christian club to get people to come to Christ. You just don't have to do it. Like, you can do anything else. And, this, and it raises the question, why do you want an alternative of the world? There's this analogy, and then I'm going to just be done. There's this analogy. Um, it's of a frog. So if you put a frog in boiling hot water, it's going to jump out. But if you put the frog in cold water and you turn it up slowly and slowly and slowly, you're not going to notice that the pot is getting hot. And eventually the frog is going to die because it was uh, it was eventually in boiling water. Like when you're in the shower and the water hot and it ain't hot no more. So you keep turning it up because it ain't hot. But it really is hot. you just been in there a long time. And that could be the same analogy with that where, like Marie said, like it's, it's kind of like that thing where it's like, it's, what's the, I can't think of the exact, like, thing. You get what I'm trying to say, though. Like, I can't think of the exact word for it, but a little leaven, leaven if the whole lump. <laughs> like, a little bit, like I didn't say, one foot in the world is two feet out of the church. Like, a little bit could turn your whole life off track. Like, a little bit turns your whole life on track to the Lord. So don't go back. Don't. We, every single one of us practically gave a reason for why it's probably not a wise thing for you to do. And if you're still arguing and convincing, she literally said, oh, I was going to go, but I'm not going to go anymore. Obviously, that's saying something. You're still trying to push for it. Like, what is in you that wants that so bad? And why can't you give it up? So that's what I want to say. And then, like, young people are leaving the church because um, they're not seeing the power there. It's like, if I could have a steak, why am I eating soggy cereal? <laughs> like, I'm going to eat a steak. And the world, like, the devil comes as an angel of light. So it's like everything else in the world looks like the steak. And then the church presents you gossip, and it's presenting you fake fake righteous and self-righteousness. And, you know, I got on my skirt, but really, like, I'm talking about everybody in the room, and I got my nose stuck up. Like, they're going to eat the steak. If they, it looks like a soggy syrup, we're supposed to have the steak, the potatoes, the butter. We're supposed to have it all. But we we have to get better and be introspective of ourselves and take a true examination of where we really are. And once we develop our personal relationship with God, we will start to see our churches get better. And that's it. So she she killed that because she definitely in the spirit on that, right? So with the Christian club thing, the reason why we do a copy of it is because we see it's effective for drawing people. And so if you really start digging to the roots of why a lot of people do what they do, right? Really get down to it. See in the spirit, a lot of times it's money. A lot of times they charging people to go in the Christian club, right? And so the world is doing this. I need some money. We're going to take what they're doing. But we're just gonna play Christian music. It's not people ain't always doing stuff out of just oh the you know righteousness or whatever. And I like what she said about the whole um, you know God to give you something different. That's something I've been praying about because y'all know I've been preaching online before it was popular, right? I've been doing this for like 12, 13 years. When I first started doing it, it was like it was a weird thing. Not everybody does it, and it's like it's this thing now where everybody's racing to put out the video first. 
And then they're cop. And so I was looking, I was like, man, back in the day, I was just doing it. It wasn't popular to do it. Now everybody, because they see the formula and they're like, well, if he can do it, I could do it. I just got to do it first. And so I literally prayed that the other day. I said, Lord, look, dude. I said, look, everybody's talking about the Mike Todd thing. Everybody's talking. I said, well, what, do you, what do you want me to talk about? He like, just give him the word on this. Let the oil do the talking. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's what he told me. Now, there's a time and place to do it. You know what I'm saying? But I love what you said because we have to understand, like, God can get a new song. Sing unto the Lord a new song, a new idea. He is the creator of all things. So what we're going to do uh, for the final thing, and we just just real real short, 30 seconds each, something like that, just real quick. All right, to me, being older, I clearly see that the world is changing, right? From when I grew up to how it is now, I feel like 80s and 90s was like peak America. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's so bad. And I feel like for some young people, like this is their normal. Right, like this is, they're never gonna know how bad it is because this is the normal for what they're teaching y'all in the schools and everything. So as believers, we clearly know we're living in the end times, but we also see the political correctness, we see cancel culture. So just real quickly, what would you say? Like real quick, we go down the line real fast. What would your advice be to young people that are trying to be bold for Christ, but then you got to worry about pronouns. You got to worry about people at your job getting offended, your school getting offended. Like, what would you say as a, as a young person living in this world? Like, do you guys just feel like, oh, well, this is normal. I don't know what you're talking about. It's not a big deal. Or does the world feel like, you know, it's weird, it's strange. We're going down and we'll go real fast and we'll call it a day. Yes, but it talks about it that these things are going to happen. So, and back then I would be scared of all the things that are happening right now. But now that I am in Christ, I have faith and I look up because that's where the redemption drive nigh. So I don't have to worry about anything else that comes my way. All I know is that I'm with the Lord and I'm secure. So I would just say, just look up and all this other stuff that's going on. Like, it will not last, it will crumble, but the Lord is forever. Um, my advice would be just to get in your word daily. Like, kill your flesh daily, do it daily, get in that routine, even when you don't feel like it, because all the answers are there. I would say uh, go for God regardless, regardless of what, everything that's going on in the world, regardless of everything they're saying, go for God regardless. I would say continue to, you know, live the set apart life. And I don't know the exact scripture, but it's like we're in the world, but not of it. So continue doing that. Um, for the unbeliever, don't ignore what's happening. Dig deeper into it and seek to find the truth. And if you seek with your whole heart, you will find it, which the truth is Jesus. And to the believer, Ephesians 6, 13, wherefore take unto ye unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Um, I like the full armor of God. Put it on every single day. Stay in your word. <clears throat> and I would say, um, you won't find anywhere in the Bible where it says to read it. You're going to find where it says study to show yourself approved. So study it. Study that word. Study, study, study. Find uh, men of accountability that will hold you accountable that know more than you do. And don't be too prideful to ask for help in the Holy Spirit. Seek after him. He will lead you in spirit and in truth. Yeah, I would, I would just say, you know, choose God every day. Like Every day is a, a fight inside and outside. So you, you never go wrong. Start your day choosing God or having it when you wake up, say this is a day for God. And <clears throat> when it comes to dealing with the issues of the world, just just un understand that we are supposed to be of a different spirit. Every pro every prophet had dealt with adversity, had dealt with the world coming on backlash. That's just going to happen. It's going to happen the closer we get to him uh, coming back. So don't even worry about that. God is our protector. He's our mighty high tower. Just keep pushing, pushing all the God to keep you through. I would just say never let the fire on your altar burn out. There should never be a day going by where you are more on fire for God yesterday than you are today. Um, like my brothers and sisters are saying, stay in your word every single day. And as far as the things that are going on in the world, 
look, things might be getting worse and worse and worse, but the word of God told us that these things will happen. But Jesus said, take heart, I have overcome the world. And just rest assured knowing that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So regardless as if the world's changing, God's word is never going to change. God himself is never going to change. And the present sufferings of this time aren't worthy to the glory that's going to be revealed when we finally get to be with Jesus in heaven. So just fight the good fight of faith, finish your race, stay faithful, and endure to the end in Jesus' name. Man, I don't know how to follow that one. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but, um, <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is that the biggest take. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, I guess the biggest takeaway I, w- I would say to leave for everyone is that um, it's 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 all a show, you know. It's it's all a show, whether um, it's and you know whether it's for 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 good or whether it's for evil. But what I do know, what I what I do know is that when you see like the people that I've seen, and the influencers and celebrities, those people are unhappy. You see, God, the reason, the show that God has, his glory shows blessed, shows happy, shows truth, shows light, shows love. And so, like, so like those are the things that you have to really understand that, like, don't just sit there and look at your phone and watch these shows and flip, 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 and then just be like, this is the truth. No, like, follow the love, follow the light, follow the Jesus. Amen. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you, hey, you, you are, you are effortlessly funny. Like it, it doesn't even. He, he said, "God, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> oh man, you don't. We, we need you for the SNL skip. Hey, bless you guys. All right. <laughs>